It's the 1920s. Felix Wankel would invent an all-new rotary compressor design that didn't use traditional pistons. Instead, it used a rouleau triangle rotor that spun inside of a housing. Two types of rotary engines would be made. DKM, which was the type designed by Felix Wankel. In a DKM engine, there are two rotors, an inner triangle rotor and an outer rotor, which is circular in shape. The center shaft is stationary. The torque was taken from the outer rotor, which was geared to the inner rotor. Because the torque was taken from the inner rotor, the engine wasn't very usable. This design also was plagued by cooling issues. The other major type is called KKM. In a KKM engine, the outer rotor is part of the housing and it does not move. The inner shaft does move with eccentric lobe for inner rotor to spin around it. In a KKM engine, the torque is taken from an eccentric shaft. And just to be clear, when Felix made the compressor, it would be years until they would figure out that you could put an intake and an exhaust port on it to make an engine. And to be fair, it wasn't just Felix Wankel working on this design. He did work for a company called NSU. When NSU would figure out that this design could be used as an engine, they would license the design to any company that would want to make, would want to offer a different type of engine. Companies such as, but not limited to, Mazda, who was the most successful with this engine design, but other companies that you may not know, Porsche, BSA Company, Yamaha, Suzuki, Nissan, Kawasaki, American Motors Corporation, Toyota, Ford, General Motors, Alfa Romeo, Curtis Wright, just about everybody and their mom wanted to get in on this new engine design. Everybody, including the top luxury car maker brand for the entire world, Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce would go for an unorthodox, outside-the-box approach with their Wankel engine. It was never their intent to build a new engine for their cars. This engine was to be marketed for military applications and run off of diesel fuel. The Rolls-Royce design would have two rotors of different sizes, a small rotor on top and a larger rotor on the bottom. The larger rotor took up 3,250 cc's of space, whereas the upper section had a space of 1,265 cc. The bottom rotor acted as a built-in supercharger or a compressor of sorts. Intake ports were located on the bottom left side. Air would enter through the intake port and then be pushed through a transfer tube to the smaller rotor where the combustion would happen. Fuel was directly injected into the section where the top rotor was. Rolls-Royce engineers tried no less than 30 different combustion chamber designs, as well as they moved the location for the direct injectors at least six times. Exhaust gases would get pushed from the small rotor down transfer tube and then exited the bottom of the engine on the right side. It's important to note that Rolls-Royce wasn't the only manufacturer to build a diesel Wankel engine. Felix Wankel himself, the inventor of this style of engine, would make a diesel variant. Felix's design for the diesel Wankel didn't use the Relo triangle, but used a quadrant with the compressor rotor in the shape of an ellipse. Felix would build two prototypes. The first one used two rotors and the second design used a single rotor, but was massive. Diesel ring was another attempt at making a diesel Wankel engine as a joint venture between German manufacturers, Daimler-Benz, Mann, Crump, and KHD. Perkins, the diesel engine manufacturing company, was to build a diesel Wankel engine of their very own, but I couldn't find any information pertaining to how far they got along with that project. It's also important to note that Rolls-Royce made more than one prototype. Their first engine was called the R1, and it was just a research tool. Compressor stage was 1126cc, combustion stage of 500cc. It was only good for 50 horsepower. It was primarily used to figure out what the best interporting arrangement would be between the two stages. R2 was an alternative 
three-stage layout. R3 was code for a redesigned combustion chamber. The new combustion chamber was being used to build up a range of engines, displacing in size of 12, 16 cc. They were good for 180 horsepower at 4,500 RPM during tests. Let's talk specs, 396 cubic inch displacement. It's essentially a four rotor design. Rolls-Royce R6, two stage Wankel engine, 6.49 inches. It was allegedly good for 350 horsepower at 4,500 RPM. Estimated 410 pound feet or 555 Newton meters around 2,400 RPM. Low pressure stage of 3250 cc, combustion stage of 1265 cc. The target weight for this engine was 939 pounds. There is a ton of conflicting information as to whether or not this engine actually produced 350 horsepower. Some sources say that this engine only ended up making 180 horsepower and Despite using high-cost, lightweight materials, it still weighed 1,150 pounds. What's interesting to note is there's so much conflicting information about this engine. The engineers were thinking that they could get 350 horsepower out of this engine, but the engine never ran under its own power. It always had to be supplied with more air from an external air compressor forcing more air into the system. The engine was supposed to make 350 horsepower, but the engine never ran on its own power. It always needed more air. So the test that they did from the conflicting information that I've read, the engine only made 180 horsepower. Somebody on the Rolls-Royce engineering team must have took a real big hit of some of his favorite stuff, God only knows what it was, because he thought that he could get 700 horsepower out of this engine design, and they couldn't even get 350 out of it. It was a really interesting engine concept. Unfortunately, the engineers were up against stuff that they just couldn't overcome. Stuff that included, but not limited to, they couldn't overcome the combustion chamber issues. The chamber was more elongated and convex, it didn't allow for compression needed without heat loss. Even with the combination of a supercharger for the bottom rotor, the engine would only run if it was constantly being supplied with more air. The engine never ran on its own power. All the test runs needed more compressed air from an external air compressor. The engine was ultimately canceled in 1974 the seals were another major failure point with these engines. They just couldn't get the seals to work proper. Also, the EPA becoming a new thing in the United States, they just didn't want the emissions associated with this engine. So Rolls-Royce would pull the plug by 1974. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, a bit different today. Which episode would you like to see done on the Wankel engine next? The AMC story, John Deere story, or General Motors Wankel story? Leave it in the comment section below. I'm interested to see which Wankel engine story you would like to see next. The Rolls Royce story won from our Wankel engine that we did almost a year ago. It's crazy to think that it was that long ago, but time just really flies when you're having fun. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this one. What engine episodes would you like to see featured on the channel in the future? Thanks again for everything that you guys bring, and until next time, toodaloo! Also, look, the EPA is a new thing over there in the United States. They don't want the missions so ultimately this engine got canceled but it would have been an epic thing if they could have figured out all the problems that they had